trade policy. In the initial years, India followed the policy of protectionism. Subsequently, import substitution was encouraged. The growing adverse balance of payment compelled to explore measures to earn foreign exchange. As a result, export promotion measures started getting prominence in the trade policy. The recent exim policy has further strengthened the export promotion measures and liberalized the trading environment. In this lesson, you will learn the evolution of trade policy and the recent export, import and tariff policy. You will also be acquainted with the progress made in fulfillment of India's commitment to WTO. It follows from the previous slide that after studying this lesson, you should be able to explain trade policies in India, describe export and import policy, describe tariff policy. Protection of indigenous industry through a variety of controls like import duties and preference for indigenous goods in respect of government purchase were accepted as the main plank of the trade policy of free India. This protectionism came to be enormously strengthened when during 1956 a serious foreign exchange crisis compelled the government to tighten the import controls. Since then, protectionism in India's foreign trade policy has operated more through the foreign exchange controls and through custom duties on imports. Subsequently, the government adopted a policy aimed at attaining as rapidly as possible a virtual self-sufficiency with regard to capital equipment and important raw materials. During the period from 1962 to 1966, some export promotion policies were introduced, but these were related mainly to and integrated with the system of import controls. The devaluation de of the rupee in June 1966 was intended to help exporters, but because of the follow-up measures, it failed to serve its purpose. In 1977-78, the import policy was liberalized and this policy continued in the following two years. On the basis of the recommendations of the Alexander Committee, the trade policy for 1979-80 and 1980-81 carried forward the policy of import liberalization and simplification of procedures to a great extent. This trade policy aimed at to increase domestic production and efficiency while at the same time providing incentives to exporters. The import-export policy of 1981-82 allowed flexible and liberal access to import requirements for actual users consistent with the aims of strengthening and diversifying the production base of the economy. The Government of India announced sweeping changes in the trade policy during the year 1991. As a result, the new Export-Import Policy came into force from April 1, 1992. This was an important step towards the economic reforms of India. In order to bring stability and continuity, the policy was made for the duration of five years. In this policy, import was liberalized and export promotion measures were strengthened. The steps were also taken to boost the domestic and industrial production. The thrust area of this policy was to liberalize imports and boost exports. The new Exim policy of 1997-2002 aims at consolidating the gains made so far, restructuring the schemes to achieve further liberalization and increased transparency in the changed trading environment. It focuses on the strengthening of the domestic industrial growth and exports and enabling higher level of employment with due recognition of the key role played by the SSI sector. The principal objectives of Export-Import Policy of 1997-2002 are to accelerate the country's transition to a globally oriented vibrant economy with a view to derive maximum benefits from expanding global market opportunities. 
to enhance the technological strength and efficiency of Indian agriculture, industry and services, thereby improving their competitive strength while generating new employment opportunities. It encourages the attainment of internationally accepted standards of quality. To provide consumers with good quality products at reasonable prices, the objectives will be achieved through the coordinated efforts of all the departments of the government in general and the Ministry of Commerce and the Directorate General of Foreign Trade and its network of regional offices in particular. Further, it will be achieved with a shared vision and commitment and in the best spirit of facilitation in the interest of export. The provisions of export in detail include free exports, denomination of export contracts. All export contracts and invoices shall be denominated in freely convertible currency and export proceeds shall be realized in freely convertible currency. In freely convertible currency, realization of export proceeds, export of gifts, export of spares, export of imported goods, export of replacement goods, export of repaired goods, private bonded warehouse, deemed export. Deemed export refers to those transactions in which the goods supplied do not leave the country. Export of services green card. All status holders and manufacturer exporter exporting more than 50% of their production subject to a minimum turnover of Rs 1 crore the preceding year shall be issued a green card by Directorate General of Foreign Trade. Economic Data Interchange The provisions of import are actual user condition, second-hand goods, import of gifts, import on export basis, Reimport of goods abroad, import of machinery and equipment used in project abroad, sale on high seas, import under lease financing, export promotion capital goods scheme, and duty exemption or remission scheme. The focus of the trade policy has been to reduce multiplicity of duty rates and rationalization of the rate structure. The scope of discretion has been drastically curtailed by abolishing power to grant ad hoc duty exemptions. An authority for advance ruling has been set up for excise and customs. This will inject greater transparency and provide binding rules. This will also help intending investors about their duty liability in advance. Custom tariff has been further reduced from 45% to 40%. To bring out a more rational and simplified duty structure, there have been seven major ad valorem rates of customs duty. Import duty structure has been rationalized in project imports. Import duty on number of items in IT sector has been reduced and rationalized. The major progress in fulfillment of commitments to the World Trade Organization include Quantities Restrictions or QRs. QRs on imports maintained on balance of payments BOP grounds were notified to WTO in 1997 for 2714 tariff lines at the 8th level. In view of the improvement in our BOP, the Committee on BOP Restriction had asked India for a phase-out plan for these QRs. Based on presentations before this committee and subsequent consultations with our main trading partners, an agreement was reached with those countries except USA to phase out the QRs over a period of six years beginning in 1997. A legal concept conferring rights to the creators and owners of intellectual and creative works, intellectual property rights are granted for literature, invention, music, etc. as business practices. In case of any misappropriation or use of the owner's work by someone else without his or her former knowledge, the owner is offered with exclusionary rights. Moreover, equilibrium is maintained by granting rights for a specific time period. 
The intellectual property rights on the international level is governed by World Intellectual Property Organization. WIPO Convention has laid down the list of activities safeguarded by intellectual property rights. Intellectual property rights enable the inventors and the creators to share their work and information rather than keeping it confidential. Besides providing legal protection, these rights offer them incentives for their piece of work. At the same time, rights under this Act grant socio-economic development. The protection of the intellectual property rights is established under an administrative, statutory and judicial framework. Indian government had issued legislative norms to protect the rights in compliance to India's obligations and worldwide practices. Under the TRIMS agreement, developing countries have a transition period of five years up to 31st December 1999, during which they can continue to maintain measures inconsistent with the agreement provided. These are duly notified. We notified two TRIMS, viz. that relating to local content requirements in the production of certain pharmaceutical products and dividend balancing requirement in the case of investment in 22 categories of consumer items. In view of the inconclusiveness of the Seattle Ministerial Conference when no final decision on the request of developing countries for extension of transition period for elimination of the notified trims was taken, it needs to be seen what final decision is taken by the General Council on this issue. Our commitments to reduce tariffs to the bound levels by 1-3-2000 exists in respect of non-agricultural, non-textile items and necessary action will be taken to fulfill these obligations. Now let us check if we have understood the various concepts discussed in this lesson clearly. Ad valorem duty is a duty assessed as a percentage of the quantity of the item. Right or wrong? Wrong. Advanced license is issued for duty-free import of inputs as defined in the policy. Right or wrong? Right. Tariff is a government tax levied on goods usually exports. Right or wrong? Wrong. Before we end, let us briefly revise what we have studied till so far. In the initial year, India followed protectionism policy, mid-imports were restricted. Subsequently, a policy of self-sufficiency was followed and domestic products, wherever it became possible, were substituted for the imports. This required a protectionist policy and consequently tariff balls were raised. This policy more or less continued till the late 70s. Starting with the 80s, a more open policy was started. Imports were liberalized in a limited way. In order to meet the payment requirements due to trade deficit, exports were encouraged. Therefore, import incentives were introduced. 